In this short video, we are going to learn the ACL direction, the excess control list direction, meaning what is inbound, what is outbound, what is inside, what is outside. So let's understand this through an example. By the way, the example the guy is exhibiting here is the WAN PC, I mean the outside PC which is in the WAN, is trying to get access to the LAN server. So we need to permit because we know that traffic from lower security to higher security by default is blocked. So traffic will be dropped here. But the reverse is allowed. From higher to lower is always welcomed and allowed. Suppose there is a system administrator who needs access to the LAN server. So he is allowing that through an ACL. So the way he configured the access list is access list out twin. Out twin is just a name, it can be any name. Name doesn't have any significance. Extended. Now, if you do not type extended here, if you just type out twin and then permit TCP, the ASA will consider that still as an extended access list. Remember, almost all the cases in ASA we use extended access list. Standard access list is only used for VPN, uh, routing redistribution and for some other minor cases. But in most cases, extended access lists are used. He's saying permit TCP host 192.168.2.20. The first host is the source and the following host is the destination. That means he's granting the access, the one PC to the LAN server. The one PC has 192.168.2.20, which is outside. And the LAN server has 192.168.1.20, which is inside. And then he's saying equal, either we can say equal www or we can say equal port 80. Port 80 is equal to www. It's the same. Again, we don't have to type eq www. We can just say TCP host 192.168.2.20 host 192.168.1.10 we are giving more information a specific information that only this host should be allowed to this destination this host only should be allowed to this destination the LAN server not this one or not that one nobody else now we need to understand the ACL direction so what is inside what is inbound what is outside what is outbound so we have to apply that via an access group into the configuration mode access group okay now it's asking me the name of the ACL we just created so this is our name and now it's asking me three types in a router you have only two things in and out but here there is a new concept it's also written here traffic and all interfaces for endpoint by the way here's one thing global interface that that means all interfaces but all inbound interfaces not outbound all inbound means suppose there is a DMZ here there's another five DMZ here so DMZ 1 DMZ 2 DMZ 3 DMZ 4 DMZ 5 and there's five interfaces like E2 E3 E4 E5 E6 etc etc so these all are inbound this is outbound because traffic is initiating from outside and going inside the LAN the DMZ so we need to understand that so global means applicable to all inbound so e2 e3 e4 e5 e6 okay right now i don't need so i will say n okay and now it's asking me the interface keyword so i got this now i have two interfaces on which interface this traffic will end by the way access so if you notice here he's saying access group outside to inside for the inside direction that means inbound so in most cases like almost 99 percent in asa we will mention inbound here and then we'll call the interface now interface and bound is two different thing the direction and the interface is two different thing so interface and then whatever we say inside or outside that is almost like a name if we are calling the interface where to apply in which interface to apply but bound is different thing that means in simple term ASA is asking I understand you want to apply this to the inside or outside interface but for who you making these rules is that for inbound or is that for outbound so we'll say inbound because in general ASA is made for inbound rules. The principal responsibility for an adaptive security appliance ASA firewall is to protect our inbound network, the inside network. Because take a close look here, there is a PC2 which is in the outside network, there's PC1 which is in the inside network. Regardless who is initiating the traffic, the traffic is always entering into the ASA. So suppose PC2 initiated a traffic, it is connecting to the outside interface, but it, it is entering to the ASA, it's transpassing the ASA, so it is inbound. Also, if PC1 wants to go to PC2 and he initiated the traffic, it is hitting to the inside interface, but it is also the inbound. So regardless who is initiating the traffic again, it is always inbound. Like it, 
the traffic is always entering that is why we always say access group inside to outside in we are talking about this in inbound the access group we made named inside to outside for inbound apply that to the outside interface in diagram we said permit tcp host 192.168.2.0 to the destination 192.168.1.0 we made this for the inside network but apply that to the outside interface acl is always for inbound we will always say in here here it could be different here it could be inside here it could be outside here it could be global but here it's in so now my traffic is coming in on this outside interface so what i apply here i say access group the name of the acl and an interface is outside that's it how to check them show running access list this is the command which command you configure and so it will show you the whole command and if you want to check access group so this is the access group which i apply to what you configure to check okay but whatever you have so the command is show access list it's showing me that uh, you have an access list with this is a hit count when there is a intersection in the ASA okay. after the trainer applied the ACL when this PC is going to intersect the ASA if there is a successful uh, you know connection established to the LAN server or not it will always show up here hit count here for now it's a zero but as soon it will hit one after one the number will change